Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Uh, I do want to encourage you to check out our store, store.greatdetectives.net, where you can pick up uh, novels, ebooks, audiobooks, make uh, great gifts, among them my novel Slime Incorporated. Uh... Also, we do have All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo and All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet, which examines life lessons from various great fictional detectives and policemen. Uh, so just go to store.greatdetectives.net. Well, we uh, continue our look at some of the uh, newly emerged uh, episodes of uh, the lineup, uh, this one comes from April the 24th of 1951, and this is the Brommel and Bellows Bloody Bullet Case. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> Oh, Clay. Haven't got any witnesses, have you? Uh-uh. I told Matt I'd get some time to kill, so I thought I'd come in and see what you have. Oh, nothing much tonight. 32 boys? Uh-huh. What's the latest on the Brommel case? Oh, nothing new. Goes to trial May tomorrow. May I have your attention, mm. please? I'll see you later. Yeah, I'm going up the office. on the other side of the wire. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. <clears throat> bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front hands to your sides. Look straight ahead. Okay, number one, Charles Conway, robbery. Step out, Charles. Okay. Take your hands out of your pockets. Okay. Where do you live, Charlie? 211 West 77th Street. Talk up, people out front want to hear you. 211 West 77th Street. Is that a house, a hotel, or what? It's a house. What's your business? No business. Used to be a carpenter. There was some union trouble. Ain't worked in a couple of months. You alone when you were arrested? Yeah. Have any weapons on you? No. Did you have a car? I didn't have a car with me. I have a car, but I didn't use it on the job. Okay, number two, George Miller. Drunk and disorderly. You always wear glasses, George? In the daytime. Well, it's night. Take them off. It's the lights, Sergeant. I wear the glasses for the sun, but these lights are bright. Take them off. Yes, sir. What's your business, George? I ain't worked in ten years, Sergeant. Where do you live? The east side. Well, where? The east side covers a lot of territory. So do I. I just move around. No special place. It caused a lot of trouble. Busted a couple of windows. Yeah, guess I got a little wingy. I don't remember none of it. I didn't mean to bust no windows. I only had a little wine. Do I get locked up? We sent you to Bellevue three times before, George. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. I didn't mean to bust no windows. I don't know whether I could take that Bellevue rap again. Better than the tank. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I'm sorry about the windows. Okay, number three. Julio Labachny. Robbery. Where do you live, Julio? Can I see him in a van? No, what is it? 618 Better Lincoln. Better tell you outside. Roman, huh? <clears throat> What's your business? Merchant Marine. Were you a seaman? No. Well, you look as if you have something hot. Yeah. Lillian Jacobs was just killed. What? They're bringing her in now. Well, what's the rest? 
Walter wants to see you. Okay, well, tell me about it on the way up. Well, nothing much to tell. Some guy got her. She went into her apartment. Must have used a rifle. No leads. Oh, nuts. Yeah. Throws the whole Brommel case right out the window. I'm worried about something like this. Well, we had two men with her. Three shots. They didn't even see where it came from. Could have been in a building, car. Didn't even see it. You got men covering the area? Been covering it for the last 20 minutes. No, they won't find anything. Nuts. You worked pretty hard on this one. Now, you had Brommel so good. We go to trial tomorrow. Girl statement isn't enough, huh? No. Oh, I don't know. I wanted Brommel for three years. I finally get him and lose my only witness. I'll see you later, Quine. Yeah. Uh, well, Ben. Well, what do you want with me, Charlie? I've done all I can do. I got you, Brommel. Now somebody blows up the witness. Whole thing goes out the window. Okay, okay. Now relax. Half an hour ago, I got off duty. I... I was figuring on going home, getting a good night's sleep, getting up in the morning and watching the district attorney crucify Brommel. I was ready to see Brommel get life or maybe the chair, and I was going to be real happy about it. Three lousy, stinking years right down the drain. Feel better? Yeah. Look, we all know how hard you worked on this thing, Oh, but... okay, Charlie, okay. Tell me what to do. Well, you know what to do as well as I do. Well, with a witness dead, we can't go to trial with what we've got. I talked with the district attorney. He says the same thing. If Brommel goes to trial tomorrow, he's bound to beat the rap. Hmm. We'll never get him on it again. Well, the only thing we can do is get the guns who killed Ali and Jacobs. Won't be easy. Well, it can't be any tougher. Maybe if we get the guy, he'll put the finger on Brommel. Brommel had it done, he paid somebody to do it, so let's get the guy. Release Brommel? Well, well, it'll take tonight and tomorrow to set things up. Hold him tonight just in case we run into some fool luck. If we don't, let him go. I'm going to take every available man you got, Carl. Well, they're all yours. Thanks. Sorry I took off like that. Yeah, you've been doing it for 12 years. Why don't you just do it and stop apologizing? I'll see you later. Matt's waiting for you in your office, Ben. Okay. Hi, Ben. Hey, I just heard about the Jacobs killing. Yeah. That's lousy luck. You're off duty. You want to go home? Well, I'm sure you want me to. No sleep for a long time, maybe. <laughs> That's new. You want to come with me, Matt? Sure. Where are we going? Let's talk to Bromo. Okay, open it. You want something, Guthrie? Well, what is it? What's on your mind? Okay, you came down here. You got something to say? Say it. What's the matter? You can't talk? Now, look. I am. What is this? What's with you two guys? You may not go to trial, Bromo. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I may not go to trial. It's late. I'm tired. You should be pretty happy. So I'm happy. Now I'd like to get some sleep. Don't you want to know why you may not go to trial? No. You disappointed? Oh, I wish I wasn't a cop. What else could you do? Push your fat face in. You won't. Lillian Jacobs died tonight. Yeah? Yeah. It's too bad. She was a nice kid. Want to borrow my handkerchief? Oh, why don't you stop being smart, Grab? Lillian Jacobs won't be able to testify tomorrow. So we haven't got a case. Look, Guthrie, I know this is a big shock to you, but what do you want me to do? I didn't kill her. I've been right in your tank, remember? Who said she was killed? Oh, okay. If you're going to start the big detective bit, let's go downstairs to your little room. If you, you work on off. me for a little while. If you get off, you get off because we don't want you beating the rap. We want you around. We do, huh? Let's go, man. It's been a pleasure, boys. Tell me something, Bromwell. Sure. How many years did your mother cry before she killed herself? Okay, boys. This is the story. Three years ago, Brommel was mixed up in a killing. We were pretty sure it was Brommel. We couldn't get any proof. Then we made sure, but we still couldn't prove it. 
We bugged his apartment, his office, even his table of his favorite restaurant. We made recordings of everything he said for nearly three months. He finally implicated himself in the killing. But you all know evidence like that can't be used in court. So then we went to work on the weakest link in his organization, his girlfriend, Lillian Jacobs. She broke down, told us Brahman had done the killing. Last night, she was shot down in front of her apartment. I want the guy who killed her. Because now he's the only one who can help us pin a murder rap on Brahma. Now here's a list of every person who's ever worked or is working for Brahma. We're going to tail them, bug their apartments. Everything they say and do, I want to know about. Sergeant Ash will give your assignments. You sure want to get this Brahma guy, don't you, Lieutenant? <laughs> Let's run that last stuff from Small and Crockett. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Ben. Matt. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Chief. Just running last night's tape from Small and Crockett there on Bernie Lang. You and Matt are on tonight, aren't you? Yeah. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Don't you think you two ought to get some sleep? We will in a little while. Yeah, you've been going pretty steady for three days. Matt and I are on Bromo. We don't want to miss anything. Okay, Matt. Let's hear it. Hi, honey. That's lying. Hi. What took you so long? Oh, I got you talking on the phone. Julie called. Huh? Give me a coat. Sure. Julie always calls like that when she's got troubles. Never lets you get off the phone. Just who's the girl? Yep, 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 Blanche yep, yep. Cummings, uh, lying steady. Yeah, who's Julie? I told you. Julie Thompson. Running around with some guy in the wholesale jewelry business. Want a drink, baby? Yeah. Now hold it, Matt. Right. Guthrie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bring it in. Something hot? That was Cargan. He's on Ray Bellows. Bellows just made a phone call to someone, said he was calling for Bromel. Told whoever it was to get out of town. Uh, Guthrie. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, get it here and step on it. Tell Lane to stay there. Tell him if he leaves right away. Well, we got our man. Who is he? Billy Kitchell. That was Williams. He's with Lane. Kitchell was the one who got that phone call from Ray Bellows. Williams says he definitely implicated himself in the killing. Hmm. It's already been... Now, this is the phone call as heard from both ends, Charlie. We splice the two together, and this is what comes out. Okay, Matt. Yeah. Billy? Who's this? Bellows. What do you want? Rommel says to get out of town. Can't do it. He says to do it. You tell him I'd love it, but I want the fare. You got a thousand? I got a thousand for the job. You tell Bromel if he wants me out, he's going to pay for it. I'm not dipping into the thousand to blow town. He says you should get cool. But things ain't cool. He's got a companion, and maybe you have too. I ain't been out of the apartment. If he's getting nervous, tell him to send me a couple of hundred. I'll be glad to make a trip. Tell him a Jacob's job wasn't easy. It's worth a couple of hundred more. Okay, I'll tell him. Okay. Oh, Billy. He wants to know what you did with the gimmick you used on the job. Off the Washington Bridge. Okay, I'll call you back. Okay. Well, that's it, Charlie. You gonna pick him up? Not right away. We're gonna see if he gets another call. In the meantime, I'm having the river dragged near the George Washington Bridge. That gimmick used on the job is probably the rifle. <laughs> How long's your diver been down this time? About 20 minutes this time. He's gone over nearly all of them. 
wait a minute. He's signaling. Airfield, what is it? Sergeant Quine says he's found a rifle. Kitchell's on 509. Yeah, hold it here. Williams, you stay here at the stairs. I'm laying down at the other end of the hall. All right, let's go, man. Yeah, who is it? Bellows. Come on, hey, what is this? Don't move, Kitchell. Okay, okay, what's going on? He's clean. No gun. Hey, look, what's this all about? Go over the apartment. Right. Now, wait a minute, where's your warrant? Right here. Well, what for? What's it all about? We'll tell you as soon as we get a report from Beliskin. Okay, if I smoke? No. Hey, look, there's got to be some kind of a charge. What's the rap? I got a right to get to a phone. But look, I can call my lawyer. You just can't keep me here. I got a right to know why you hold me in. What is it? Guthrie? Yeah? Okay, thanks. Well, what's wrong? What do you give me the fish eye for? The Lillian Jacobs killing. I don't know what you're talking about. Lillian Jacobs. I want to know who hired you to kill her. Kill her? You're crazy. Give me a full statement, you may get life. I'll give you nothing. I didn't do no killing. I don't know any Lillian Jacobs. I want Leo Bromo. What are you talking to me for? You want him? Go get him. First degree. You'll get the limit. Who ratted? You said you were Bellows when you come to the door. Did Bellows rat on me? Hey, can I have a cigarette. No. Bellows was the only one I told her I tossed that gun. Okay. Do I get life? You mind? You got a better chance anyway. Who paid you? Brommel paid me. Lousy thousand bucks. It was Bellows who ratted, wasn't it? Get a stenographer, man. Okay. Here, get you. Have a cigarette. Staked out, Ben. If Brahma wants to put up a fight, he can put up a pretty good one. Yeah. Who's up there with him? Ralph Levy and Ray Bellows. Bellows came in about a half hour ago. Well, Brahma's got the whole eighth floor, private elevator. You'll have either Levy or Bellows on the elevator. The minute it stops on their floor, they're ready. How about the fire escape? No, too tough. Only one man can get through the window at a time. Besides, we come in on them like that, they've got to put up a fight. Well, can we walk in cold? Suppose I call him from the lobby. Tell him I'm coming up to talk to him. He'll have to handle three of them. Asher, you and Quine go up on the ninth floor. If there's any shooting, come down that fire escape. Right, man. Okay, let's go, man. Where's the house phone? Over there. Oh. Leo Brommel, please. Hello? Now, let me talk to Brommel. Tell him, Lieutenant Guthrie. Hello, Bromo. Yeah. 
Well, I want to talk to you. That's right. Well, that's important. Yeah, I'm alone. Yeah. Okay. That's no good. No way I can come up? He expects me alone. Here comes the elevator. Uh, you better get out of sight just in case he sends one of his boys down with him. Good luck, Ben. Thanks. Turn in, Lieutenant. Oh, how are you, Bellas? I think I'm catching up. Don't start up. Hey. Don't touch that or I'll blow your head off. What is this? What's with the gun? Put your hands against the wall. Now, wait a minute. Now. Okay, okay. Hmm. You got a permit for this, Ray? No. Rommel ain't gonna like this. He certainly isn't. Take us up. Now. When we get up there, you're gonna walk out in front of me. I'm keeping my gun in my pocket, and you get it first if you open your mouth. Make a bad one, Ray, and I'll cut you in two. Okay. Well, how are you, Guthrie? I'm all right. Sit down, have a drink. You know Mr. Levy? Yeah. Well, sit down, rest your flat feet. You can beat it, Ray. Well, you heard me. Beat it. Go pour yourself a drink. Ray stays where he is. What? And don't you move, Levy. What is this? Listen, Guthrie. Ray's not saying anything because I've got a gun on him. You nuts? I'm arresting you as an accessory to murder. Are you starting that again? This is a new one. Lillian Jacobs. <laughs> I've got Billy Kitchell. And the rifle he tossed in the river. Ralph, no. He'll shoot. <laughs> Okay. Watch the glass, Klein. Yeah. They're all down. Hey. Yeah. My leg. Uh, give me a tie or something. Yeah. Sure. Still a little light and levy. Bromwell and Bellows have had it. How bad is it, Ben? Just, just the thigh. Call an ambulance. Right. There. Is that tight enough? Yeah. Please look for this way. How'd you get in on this? Oh, I just said something about... Age before beauty and climbed out on the fire escape. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Well, that's the sergeant. Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identification... The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Dave Young, Barney Phillips, Herb Butterfield, Jack Moyles, Ray Hartman, Ed Begley, and Sandra Gould. The Lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, what a great episode. Um, very uh, entertaining with action mixed in. And so much they managed to fit into this. Uh, there was less than 25 minutes for the whole plot, including a scene uh, in the lineup room. This is probably one of my favorite episodes of the series, so I'm glad this com- came into circulation, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, well, listener comments and feedback, and uh, we have an email from Joshua who says, I love Nightbeat. I listen to so much old-time radio and always hear Frank Lovejoy guest starring, sometimes uncredited, throughout the old-time radio stratosphere. Um, I and my friends had said several times that he's the Alec Guinness of Radio Long Past. Uh, love the program. Hope to donate soon. Thanks so much, Josh. Uh, appreciate it. And I'm glad you enjoyed our preview of Nightbeat. And of course, Nightbeat's going to be with us in less than three months now on a regular basis on Monday. So excited to bring that to you. All right. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Richard Diamond and next Tuesday, another episode of the lineup. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at radio.